Hey everybody, we are getting ready for the Sabbath here in Israel, and um, just wanted to go over with you a few thoughts from this week's Torah portion, Vayetze. Last week's Torah portion was Toldot, that is the Bar Mitzvah Parsha of my son, and Yakir's, and Ari's son, Yakir, as well as my Bar Mitzvah Parsha, and it brings about uh, it, we learn about the story of J- Jacob, of Yaakov, of him basically steal, uh, not stealing, him b- purchasing the birthright from Asa, who didn't want it. And then his mother, Rebecca, Rivka, um, leading Jacob on how to get the blessing of the birthright from his father instead of Asa. And at the end of last week's Parsha, the cliffhanger we were left at, was that Esau was mad at Jacob for getting the blessing, even though he got a different blessing, and Jacob had to run away, right? Rebecca told Jacob, run, go to my brother's house in Haran, get out of here, save yourself, right? Because Esau was chasing him. Esau wanted to kill him because he was so angry, which in and of itself is a question. Why would Esau be so upset at Jacob for getting the blessing of the birthright, when in the beginning of last week's Torah portion, when Jacob said, hey, I'll buy the birthright from you, right? I'll t- if, 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 take, this, t- take this red soup, and in exchange, give me the birthright. And Esau said, yeah, what do I need? it? I don't need the birthright at all. I'm going to die any day. Meaning, Esau did not, was not interested in the birthright, the lifestyle of Esau, hunting. He was a man of the moment, no meaning in life, no purpose, no thinking of the future. He was a man of the now. He didn't want the birthright. He said, I don't want the birthright. I want I want the red lentil soup. That's what I want. I don't care about the birthright. And yet at the end of the Parsha, Esav ends up wanting to kill Jacob for not just having the birthright instead of him having the blessing from Isaac. Okay, so now we come to this week's Parsha, Vayetze. Okay, and now read with me, everyone. Read with me, and Shabbat Shalom to everyone who are here with me today, listening. We got Maria, Margaret, MC, Susan, Shins. Thank you, everyone, for watching. Shabbat Shalom, and share, share, share. Vayetze Yaakov mi Be'er Sheva, Vayelech So where was the family living at the time? In Be'er Sheva. And as you guys all know, when I talk about the Bible, when I talk about the Torah, and I talk about the Jewish people, this is the book that teaches us about the startup nation. We are a startup nation, and these are the places where the startup nation began. So we're supposed, to, we Jews are supposed to be proud of our Jewish heritage and be proud of us being the startup nation by visiting Be'er Sheva and visiting Hebron and visiting all the places in the Bible where our forefathers began and started up our nation. So here we go. Vayetzi Yaakov Be'er Sheva Harana. He goes to Haran. Why is he going to Haran? Because Haran is the place where his uncle lives, where Rebecca is saying, go to my brother, go to my brother's family, be safe there from Esav. Now, here is the sentence we're going to talk about today very quickly. Listen to the words very carefully. Jacob hit the place. He hit the place. What does that mean he hit the place? Jacob came to a place. And he stopped to go to sleep. Why? Because the the, 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 sun, was, the sun was setting. It was the end of the day. Jacob came to a place at the end of the day in order to go to sleep. Right? Very wonderful. Right? But again, the most important thing about learning the Bible, for Jews definitely, is paying close attention to the specific words chosen. Because God wrote the Bible for us, and he does not mince words. He does not use the wrong word. Every word means something, is important. And if something doesn't make sense, we have to learn why that specific word is used, because God used it for a purpose. What do you mean he, he, he hit a place? He bumped into a place. Say, he stopped. 
Or he, he came to X place and he, and he stopped to go to sleep. Why have I got and he hit a place? What does it mean he hit? You, you don't, you don't, you don't hit a place. You stop somewhere. Hold on one second. Okay, so what does that mean you hit a place? Vaif Gabamakom. Before I explain the word Vaif why God is using the word and he hit a place, right? He hit a place. We have to also ask ourselves why the use of the word Makom? The word Makom is very generic, it means a place. But places have names. Places have geographic descriptions. Even even in the, the Bible, whenever whenever our forefathers go someplace, it always gives us the name of the places. It never uses a generic term, the place. But here it does. So now we have to think to ourselves, because there are some other places in the Torah, in the Bible, where this term, makom, is used. And do you guys know what the name of that place is? The name of the place that the term makom, the generic term, the place is used, is the place of the temple, the Beit HaMikdash, Har HaMoriah. So basically, what the Torah is telling us is that Jacob came to Haram Moriah. Jacob came to that place, the holiest place of the Jewish people, to the place where the temple will be built, where it was built, that it was built a second time, and it will be built a third time. That is the place in the world to the Jewish people. That is the holiest place. That is the one place that the Torah uses, this is the one term the Torah uses to describe the place of the, of the temple. Hamakom. So basically we are learning here that Jacob stopped on Mount Moriah where the temple would be built one day. So now we have to ask ourselves, so okay, so he's stopping. The word makom, the place, is used to explain that Jacob stopped at the holiest place for what will be for the Jewish people where the temple would be built, Mount Moriah. So what does it mean by Bamakom? Why why did he hit the place? Again, doesn't doesn't necessarily make sense. Let's continue. Vayachalom, this is the famous dream, the famous dream of Jacob. He had a dream. And there is a ladder reaching the heavens. And he sees angels walking up and walking down. And we learn from the rabbis, why are angels walking up and walking down? Well, Jacob was about to leave. He was about to leave the land of Israel. And our rabbis teach us that there are special angels that look after us when we are in the land of Israel, our homeland. And there are other angels that look after us when we are outside of the land of Israel. Because the Jewish people are supposed to be in the land of Israel. The land of Israel is our special place where we belong. We're supposed to be here. And there are special angels who look after us when we are in the land of Israel. And when we leave, then there are different angels that look after us outside of the land of Israel. So that's what's happening. In Jacob's dream, he is seeing the angels of the land of Israel go up into the heavens. And the angels that look after us outside of the land of Israel, coming down. So that's the dream that's going on. Okay? And then, well, I'm, just, I'm just continuing on. So Jacob understands he's in a very special place. Okay? He's in a very, very special place. They cracked... Uh, Okay, uh, I wanted to go to another 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 sentence here. Um, 
Yaakov, Jacob wakes up from his dream. Vayikatz, Vayakov, Mishnato. He wakes up from his dream. Vayomer, Achim, Yeshet, Elohim, Vakom, Azeh. This is the only place. God is here. Vanochi, no Yadati. I didn't know God was here. Again, explaining to us, Oh my God, this is the holy place. Vayirah, Vayomar, Manorah, Makom, Azeh. How awesome. How amazing is this place? Meaning out of holiness. Ein Zekim, Beit Elohim. This is the place of God. So Jacob understands he's in a holy place. So now what's going on? He, he, when he says he hit the place, means he didn't walk into a wall. It means in his head he understood, oh my God, he walked in and hit spiritually, emotionally, the holiest place of the Jewish people. What does that do with Ari? That is the place that Ari understood is going to bring the redemption. One day, the Jewish people are going to build the third temple. That's going to bring the redemption. We are going to live peacefully with our Arab neighbors when Jews are allowed to pray on our Temple Mount. When the Jewish people are sovereign over the Temple Mount, and all nations of the world are able to pray there. Because right now, only the Muslims are allowed to pray there. Only the Muslims control the place, even though Israel has the police there, but it's the Muslims who set the rules. No peace will happen so long as the Muslims have control over the Temple Mount. Only when they understand the Jews are in control, the Jews set the rules, the Jews are allowing everyone to pray there, all nations of the world to pray there, as God tells us, as the Bible tells us, only then will we be able to have, live in peace with the Muslim world, because the Muslim world is about domination. And this holy place, it's not about domination. It's about God dominating the world. And the only way there will be freedom for all people in the world is when the Jewish people are there allowing God to dominate the world and taking the domination away out of the hands of the Muslims. Because they want to dominate. No peace will happen as long as the, the, the non-Muslim world allows the Muslim world to dominate. And the key to peace is that holy place, that place. We have to hit the place. We have to hit it in our minds. We have to hit it in our souls. That is the place that's going to bring peace when the Jewish people control 100% and allow freedom of religion, freedom of worship, so that God can dominate the world and not the people of the Muslim religion. I'm out of here, folks. Shabbat shalom. Share, share, share in Ari's memory. Thanks for watching.